Hi, I'm Christopher Barnes. I'm an associate professor in the Foster School of Business here at the University of Washington. My research focuses primarily on how sleep influences people at work, as well as how work influences their sleep. I'm here today to talk to you about some research I've conducted with my colleagues Lorenzo Lucianetti, Devashish Bave, and Michael Christian on the topic of sleep and abusive supervision. Abusive supervision is hostile verbal or nonverbal behaviors that leaders engage in towards their subordinates, excluding physical contact. The simple way to look at abusive supervision is to assume that good leaders avoid this behavior and bad leaders engage in it frequently and never the twain shall meet. But this is an oversimplification of human behavior. None of us is always good or always bad. All of us are good sometimes and bad other times. This applies to leaders as much as anyone. Uh, so this is where we started with our research on abusive supervision. So in my research, I tend to focus on how sleep influences people's ability to exert self-control. There's a relatively large body of literature in the sleep physiology domain, which indicates that when people are sleep deprived or suffer lower quality sleep, uh, the prefrontal cortex of their brain suffers an especially detrimental effect. This is the region that's responsible for self-control. Uh, and this research indicates that sleep deprived people and people who have poor quality sleep are less effective at using self-control to guide their own actions. So we started with the idea that abusive supervision should vary on a daily basis uh, and that self-control plays an important part of this process. Oftentimes leaders face temptations to engage in abusive supervision. They have employees who make mistakes or irritate or frustrate them. When I think back on my military career, when I was a lieutenant in the Air Force, I made a mistake in our equipment tracking process that created some problems for our work unit. My supervisor, Captain Doan, was irritated by this and obviously faced the temptation to yell at me, perhaps in front of my colleagues, in a way that would have been considered pretty abusive. However, he suppressed that temptation and avoided that behavior and instead pulled me aside, talked to me very gently and corrected the behavior in a much more effective manner. So this required him to exert self-control, but that's especially difficult when people are sleep deprived or suffering from poor quality sleep. My colleagues and I believed that sleep would be an important part of this process, such that when leaders are suffering poor quality sleep or they're sleep deprived, their ability to exert self-control will suffer and as a result, they'll be more likely to engage in abusive supervision on any given workday. So the same leader will be abusive on one day and not another based in part on how well they slept the night before. This should also have downstream consequences for the subordinates of those leaders. There's research to indicate that when leaders engage in abusive supervision, their followers are less likely to fully invest themselves and engage themselves in work that day, in part because it's less safe for them to be fully invested and partly because they're distracted by that behavior of their supervisor. So we predicted that leader sleep would influence subordinate work engagement partly through uh, the abuse of supervision of the leader. To test these hypotheses, we conducted a field study in Italy uh, using employees from a broad variety of occupations. We had leaders complete sleep diaries for two weeks. We also had their subordinates complete surveys for two weeks, asking them about the behaviors of their leaders. In our analyses of these data, we found results that were largely consistent with what we were expecting. We found indeed that for the same leader, a poor night of sleep led to high levels of abusive supervision the next day, and vice versa, a good night of sleep led to low levels of abusive supervision. Moreover, this in turn had the predicted effect on work engagement of the employees. We did not find the same results for sleep quantity, which we still haven't quite figured out why is the case, but the effects for sleep quality were quite clear. So I find a few things interesting about this research. Uh, one is the idea that leaders can behave differently on different days towards their subordinates, and sleep might be one driver of that effect. What I think is perhaps more interesting though is that the sleep of one person can influence the behavior of other people. It's probably pretty intuitive that my sleep would influence my own behavior and my own work outcomes, but it's much less intuitive that my sleep would influence the behavior of other people who work around me. Uh, and that's what we find in the context of leader abuse of supervision and follower work engagement. So the most important take home point from this research is the following. If you wanna be a good leader who treats people well, and gets good outcomes from your work group, get a good night of sleep. Your subordinates will be glad that you did.